So the English Rugby Premiership is the most excited it's been in years, and the overall standard of every team in the competition has risen exponentially, resulting in the competition being the most competitive it's ever been. And that increase in competition has led to a team like Leicester Tigers being in a real relegation battle, with these next few weeks being some of the most important in the club's history. To illustrate how serious this is, they've brought in Mike Ford, former England Bath and Toulon coach, as well as George Ford's dad, to help make sure they avoid the drop. This, in my opinion, has all been caused by the fact that the powers that be at Bristol Bears decided that they wanted to spend a whole buttload of money to make sure they stay up. And to be fair, it worked, and it has actually shown how much money you need to spend and the colour of player that you need to spend that money on to make it in the Premiership nowadays, which is both great and slightly concerning depending on your point of view. The amalgamation of all these factors coming together has meant that at least one really, 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 really good team will be in the Championship next year, as the role of promoted whipping boys was declined by the Bristol Bears this year, which, along with many other paralleled subplots all revolving around power and money, has brought up the now constant question around the way English rugby is run. Should the English Premiership be ring-fenced? Now, to answer this question, I should probably address what ring-fencing is, and what it means for club rugby in England, if it happens. So, to ring-fence something is to enclose a piece of land in a ring-fence. It can also be used for talking about money, meaning, back off, it's mine, nobody touches my money, which I believe is how the British government usually uses the term, and weirdly, in the exact same tone. But in rugby terms, it would mean to make the Premiership an impregnable fortress where no team is allowed in or out, which in layman's terms means no relegation from the Premiership and no promotion from the Championship. It will become its own thing in its own universe. For the comic book fans, consider English rugby to be DC Comics. You have clubs like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and of course, Leicester Tiger. Now, all these clubs are in the same universe, but if a team like Ealing Trialfinders wants to go hang out and spar with the DC Trinity of Justice, every year they must first battle the other B-team clubs like Green Arrow, Catwoman, and of course, Cornish Pirate, before they can hang out with the big boys. Now, this also works in the other direction. If a club like Worcester Warrior isn't meeting the standards that Batman and co have set, they get sent down to be in the lower tier of heroes, with it being unlikely, but possible, for them to fall even further down every year facing teams like Killer Croc, Clayface, and maybe even Condiment King. If they're unlucky enough. Now, what ring fencing means for the DC Universe is that they want the current model to be scrapped and basically have the clubs become like the DC series Watchmen. Now the Watchmen is made by DC, owned by DC, and drawn by the artists of DC, but they're not connected to the DC Universe. They don't hang out with Batman or Worcester Warrior, they are in their own universe with their own stories, with no chance of anyone in that universe interacting with anyone from outside, and vice versa. Which is the longest, stupidest, and most unnecessary metaphor I have ever put to tape, but it means <gasps> that the English rugby DC combined universe becomes, in my opinion, both confusing and stale with there being no clear pathway for a lower league team to make it to the big leagues. Unlike today, where it being unlikely, I play for Tring, which is four leagues below the Premiership. But feasibly, in four years, our team could make it to the Premiership, with it being an actual possibility for teams in higher leagues who have that ambition. Now this lack of opportunity just puts a massive wet turd in the way of any club's ambition to get to the big time. And you may be arguing, oh, but if a team's good enough, they can just be added to the Ring Fence product, like a new character in the Watchman series. But no, then it becomes like Super Rugby, where we could see teams cut left and right and brought in and brought out and over bloating the product, meaning more games and even less investment. No, stop, I don't like it. I've done videos in the past talking about how Super Rugby's system of having no relegation has a major downside in the fact that about halfway through the season, a lot of teams, and I mean a lot of teams, have nothing to play for making a lot of the games meaningless exhibitions to casual fans. But what we see in the Premiership at the moment is genuine investment in games that matter all over the league, with the palpable dread and exhilaration for a genuine race for a top four place and a genuine fear for some great Premiership squad to go down to the Championship. It is a beautiful, ruthless jungle, but with rim fencing, that is all gone, apart from the top four race. But now, let's look at why people would want rim fencing in the Premiership, sticking with the topic of relegation. So you're a businessman, you have money, you invest in English Premiership Rugby Club. Problem is rugby in this league is really competitive and if your team get relegated, either it will cause you a major loss and could potentially have people losing their jobs due to the championship not nearly being as financially lucrative, and the fact that it will be a significant amount of money that you will need to spend to get them back into the big leagues, but with ring fencing, it's no problem. It's a safe bet to make financially. And that's what ring fencing is all about. Money, keeping the biggest clubs in the biggest leagues with the biggest stars for as long as possible to make big cash. And that on the surface can be shallow, but when you look at the sustainability of the game in this country, it makes sense. The game's expenditure at the club level is inflating at a mad rate. And to be brutally honest, it can't continue at this pace. And it's a shame, and I hope the game never has to come to rim fencing, and I hope it never becomes an inevitability 
rather than the possibility that it is now. Signed, N-G-J. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe with the notify bell on to let you know when I've uploaded. Again, thank you very much. See you later.